the button. Oh, there we are. All right. So at the Trib, um, I was on a project to create a new mobile version of our website. Um, but it really bugged me that we decided right up front that a mobile website was the right thing to do. So we backed up a bit and asked ourselves a few questions. We asked questions like, who are we trying to reach? What's their daily routine? How do these people live? Right? Well, it turns out they listened to the radio on their way to work, and they read their phones online at the supermarket and on the bus and when they were on the toilet, and they watch daily show on their laptop when they're cooking dinner for their family, and they read Facebook in bed and their phones in the dark. Right? So our guiding principle became that we needed to meet people where they're at. We needed to reach our audience in those in-between moments, before work, on their commute, after their kids are asleep, the cracks in their day. And of course, we arrived at the conclusion the thing we needed to build was a mobile website. Um, and we knew the point was, but we knew the point was not to build something just for a device. The point is that we needed to build stuff that fit into how people live their daily lives these days, right? So um, our team is made up of two software developers, two designers, a reporter, and myself. Sometimes I code, but usually I manage and edit projects. Um, we do maps and charts and visualizations and all sorts of things like data analysis, photo, video projects, multimedia, and things like election results, right? Um, this is different. This is a Terremoto. It's a popular Chilean beverage made with, get this, white wine, ice cream, and fernet, right? It is important because I'm certain this drink was not invented by someone with options. <laughs> At a fully stocked bar, you'd be drinking a pina colada, but constraints, they force you to be creative. And in that spirit, we have rules on our team. And our biggest rule is that if it doesn't work on mobile, it doesn't work. To follow this rule, we do responsive web design. That is, we build regular old websites, we do some tricks to make them fit on any size screen. It's not technically difficult. The challenges are organizational. What's hard is prioritizing your design so it fits on any screen. So we trick ourselves into prioritizing by designing the mobile version first, right? So after we sort that out, we stretch the design out for the desktop. And if that seems restrictive, well, it is. But this is about embracing, embracing constraints, right? Mobile first design is a great mind hack. Now I get to breathe for a second. We, we're graffitiing the office because they're going to tear the building down next week. <laughs> All right, so here's some examples. So Cook Your Cupboard is our latest project. It is a silly little website where people ask for advice on how to use the strange things in their pantries. It needs to be great on mobile because people are much more likely to take a picture with their camera phone and just upload it straight to our site as opposed to using their camera and then going to their laptop, desktop and going around. Um, the Oscar Party was a live blog and chat. It issued uh, live results from the Academy Awards. Uh, we built it for folks who were watching TV, right? So if you're watching TV, you probably don't, you're probably not at your desktop computer. This thing did 14% mobile traffic. That made us happy. Um, I love this little project. Uh, the books desk asked us to help publish this cartoon. Um, we spoke with the illustrator and said, hey, how about you put those things, put the cartoon on a regular grid so that it stretches nicely? Um, people shared the crap out of it. Um, all right. So, uh, In Memoriam is a tribute to the musical artist who died in 2012. It's one of several sort of rich multimedia experiences we built both for the desktop and for mobile devices. And I'm, I'm sort of in love with the idea that your phone can act like a little transistor radio. People love to listen on these things. All right, so let's, let's ask our question here. Who are our users? People who heard, who heard a scary story about a fire? Uh, what do they want to know? They want to know, will I be safe? Will my loved ones be safe? Um, so we give them a chance to look it up. 25% mobile traffic. Woo! I just ran these numbers. Um, this is a list of people who are killed in grain bins. Um, it is a gruesome way to die. Um, we considered lots of ways to present this data, maps, timelines, charts, but none seem stronger than just presenting the stories about how these people died. All right, um, this is the big board. Um, we built a lot of things for the 2012 election, um, but this piece sort of stood out. We were asked to b put results on projectors like this one in the, new, in, in the studio for the host to read on air. Um, then we realized, hey, this would be really awesome if we released it to the public, um, but we almost didn't. Um, but it's a good thing that we did. Uh, the big boards counted for nearly half of our election traffic. Um, lots of folks put it up on their walls, like these lovely people, and sent us a photograph. They're awesome. All right, so... Read again. All right. So lots of folks who do graphics and interactives that other news organizations think we're nuts. Um, I've been engaged in several arguments about the subject just recently. Um, they want big, beautiful displays for their big, detailed, crazy designs, right? And they think it's impossible to cram the graphics they want to do onto a small screen. And they're probably right. Um, but I don't care. I mean, if we don't do journalism for our own satisfaction, we do it for an audience. And if your audience can't use your stuff because they're on the sofa and they're in bed or they're on the can, then the stuff you're doing is wrong. And it's a pain in the ass sometimes, but I think we're witnessing the beginning of a new way of making the web. And I would rather embrace it and learn to do my job well on the small screen. Thanks. Woo!